Okay, so in the process of these extras videos, we showed all those things Spark can do, including writing patterns to its own internal pattern sequencer for software drums, third-party ones, or for hardware drum modules, drum machines, etc. And when we did that, we used the preferences part of Spark, the drum map for the pads, we set it to general MIDI, because most third-party drum software and hardware drum modules and drum machines set their drums out to general MIDI notes. So we changed the pads in Spark to have general MIDI note numbers, modified some of them maybe, but basically we're using a general MIDI note set for the pads, and then we recorded patterns into Spark's internal pattern sequencer using those general MIDI notes which perfectly played back and triggered our third-party software or hardware drums. And just to show you that, I've got pattern A1 in the sequencer here, the, the Spark sequencer. Spark is running as a standalone, as before. And this pattern A1 perfectly triggers the software Indie Kit, the EXS sampler Indie Kit, like this. Okay? So we know pattern A1 is playing back general MIDI notes. The pattern stored in Spark's pattern sequencer A1 is playing back general MIDI notes. It's triggering the software drum kit perfectly, so the kick drum is playing on C1, the snare is on D1, etc. And similarly, if I choose the external hardware track, which has got the hardware drum module on it, I've got pattern A2 here, which again, using general MIDI notes, is playing back and triggering the hardware drums perfectly. Okay, so we know pattern A1 and A2 in Spark Sequencer are playing back general MIDI notes. Now the way that this chapter should end is it should end like this, with me saying, okay guys, so once we've built all these wonderful patterns using Spark's internal pattern sequencer for our third-party software and hardware drums, then any time we like, we can boot up our host sequencer, we can load up that Spark project with all those wonderful patterns in, and then in the library part of Spark, we can simply export those patterns onto the host sequencer tracks directly and we can then use those patterns to play back the same third-party software and hardware that they were written for, but we can use those patterns actually in our host sequencer tracks direct, and then use those patterns to build wonderful arrangements. That's how the chapter should end. <laughs> but there's a bug, <laughs> and the bug is quite simple. We know that the patterns A1 and A2 playing back trigger the software drums and the hardware drum module perfectly. We know the notes in those patterns are playing general MIDI notes. But the bug is this, when you export the patterns out of Spark, Spark converts them on the fly as you export them to Spark drum map format. So pattern A1 and A2, both of which, when they're playing back from the pattern sequencer of Spark, are playing back general MIDI notes. When those patterns are exported, that's pattern A1, pattern A2, Spark has put the notes in the pattern into Spark format, okay? And Spark format is the default format that Spark uses when it's playing its own internal sounds, its factory projects. And the way Spark format works is the first instrument pad begins on the note C3, and then each pad works up a semitone at a time from C3. So our general MIDI patterns which work in Spark Sequencer, when they're exported onto a host sequencer track, they're exported in Spark format. So there's the kick drum, which should be on C1. It's on C3, because the kick drum was on the first Spark pad, and Spark format puts the first pad on C3. And then every other pad just works up a semitone from there. So my snare, those two notes there, which should be on D1, the snare is put on C sharp 3 and my closed hi-hat there, which should be on F-sharp one, is put on D3. Yeah, so I've got a kick drum on C3, snare on C-sharp 3, closed hi-hat on D3, and they all should be further down, you know, so the exported patterns, unfortunately, are all on the wrong note numbers. It's a bug that Arturia have missed. And unfortunately, that's the end of this chapter. It ends on a rather sad note that the final act of all these wonderful things that Spark can do should be that we can export those patterns out of Spark any time and use them on our host sequencer 
to build arrangements around, but until Arturia fix this export bug, we can't. Unless you, unless you really want to go into the exported patterns and modify every single note by dragging them to the correct note number, but I'm, I don't want to do that. So there you go, that's the state of play unfortunately, and that's at the end of May where Spark is on version 1.61, but they're about to begin beta testing version 1.7, so hopefully they will have fixed this bug. And um, I would suggest you go to the Arturia forums and petition them to fix this bug, because if we can export the patterns out of Spark Sequencer with the correct note numbers as we've set them, then that just doubles the power of Spark and all the things it can do. Okay. So there you go, that's the end of the group of videos showing all the Spark extras.